you thought that football in Europe was over until next season, well, you'd be wrong. We've come to Ireland for the Dublin Derby between Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers, a fixture that can be traced back a hundred years and divides this fair city. Well, this is the big game in, in, in the country, no matter what people say. You know you're at a match when you go to a, a Bowes Rovers match. There's always banter between all the clubs in the world, but between Bowes and Rovers, it's where it's more fierce, there's more, more to it. Yeah, it's not friendly. There's banter on it, but it's, it's not friendly. <laughs> Albert Bowes takes on the meaning of the bragging rights for whoever whoever comes out on top. They don't like each other at all. They're the scorn of the Irish football community. There will be like crunch and tackles. The crowd will be getting involved. It will be big. Every day, it is fucking insane. Yeah, oh, there's a bit may mayhem, if I'm being honest. It's a rising feeling of delirium. It's almost like tribalism or something, you know what I mean? You're here to play your mortal enemies. It's like you just add something extra to the game. Whilst Bows are the oldest club in Dublin, it's Rovers who are the most successful in the city and country. But this rivalry isn't really about silverware or history. Instead, it stems from a natural north-south divide that's created by the River Liffey, which runs through the capital. The north side and the south side of Dublin have got their own kind of separate identities. The south side would be more middle class and the north side would always kind of be considered more working class. Bohemians are the biggest club on the north side. Rovers were always a south side team, you know, from, from down the rings end area up to Milltown, so there is that divide. So the, the, it really goes that you're from the north, you support Yeah, Bowers. if you're from, from the, the north side, you're a Bowes fan, and if you're from the south side, you're a Rovers fan. It's red and black against green and white. It's a members' own club against not a members' own club. You see, there's so much history between Bowes and Rovers. When Rovers are very strong, uh, in the 80s, they took a lot of good young players from Bohemians and built squads that won four leagues in a row from a lot of players that were Bohemians. A lot of people see the El Clasico between Real Madrid and Barcelona as one of the greatest rivalries in world football. And whilst the Dublin derby doesn't share such status, both games do share a particular incident. A couple of years ago, uh, we signed a guy who used to play for Shamrock Rovers. Rovers fans loved Tony Grant, uh, but when he went to Bowes, he obviously took a particular dislike. Yeah, pig's head was thrown on after the Figo incident at Barcelona. This was a larger one now. <laughs> this was uh, an Irish pig's head, not a little pig's head that was uh, put on the pitch. There's been various incidents like that uh, between the fans on and off the pitch. It's part of the game, you know, it's, it's that bit of rivalry. <laughs> Do you have any favourite stories or moments uh, from the derby that you love to share? I scored on me on my day on the derby I did. I ran into the ball, the ball just came down and it hit me and I went in and it was, I was I was only 18 and it was mad. It was here? Yeah, what was the scenes like after? We just ran up, I was just what was going on. I remember a game in Santry. We played Rovers and uh, Roddy Collins was the manager. We were 4-1 down at half time and we got it back to win 6-4. We beat them here on this ground 4-0 and the fans, they loved that lift. 4-0, it was the most amazing time of my life. Oh, it was spectacular. To get four goals against them, it was just incredible. Like. The place was rocking. The place was absolutely rocking. I don't know the songs now, but you definitely hear them getting sick of a 4-0. Don't let that down. We've heard about the last minute winners by uh, Gary, Gary Twig, I think. The best thing and the biggest thing he'd done was he scored two late goals in our first derby here against Bowles. And he kind of made a speciality from them scoring in uh, derbies of it following two or three years to win matches. Gary did a bit of damage against us a couple of times already, right, yeah. If you would have played against Twiggy you know, before you're a good player, I know, but always been a time that's really. Nah, he was a fantastic player, he really was. Oh, come on, how do you really feel about him? Besides, he's a scum. He's a absolute scum, It's clear this game matters, but it's not until you walk around Dublin and see the support and advertising for Irish sports like Gaelic football, which regularly draw crowds of 83,000 to here at Croke Park, that you realise the battle football in Ireland is up against. In Dublin and in Ireland, it's Gaelic is, and Hurland, it's massive. So the soccer kind of takes a bit of a backseat against it, you know. It's the biggest game in the country, the GAA. So it's something unique to Ireland. So when you've that up against you, it's difficult. We're competing with England as well in Ireland. The Premier League is king in Ireland. People are more inclined to sit at home to watch football on the telly than to actually get out and actually experience what a football club is. And this is exactly what Irish football is offering to people. And this is our team, this is what we have, this is what we have to offer. An identity. This, it's an identity, it literally is an identity. This is, um, you know, my club. This is where I belong. It's a very difficult environment to operate because there's no massive TV money. It's probably similar to League One or League Two clubs where 
it is hard to survive all the time. At the start of the year, the accountant's probably looking at the fixture saying, Bows and Rovers, we need a few quid to get us going. Average crowd for an normal is probably only about a thousand, but then obviously on Rovers you get everyone out for it. There's probably going to be about three thousand here. So you triple your crowd? Once Bows play Rovers, it, the fans seem to come out of woodwork for it. For the welfare of the club, it's massive. Uh, in terms of income, we, we need this game, they need this game. Yeah, it's important, you know, for everything. It's a live game on TV as well, on the national TV station, so it's it's important that we put on a spectacle as well for the people that maybe not come to League of Ireland football to try and entice them here. OK, maybe you don't have the, the same numbers as the Premier League, but do you, do you have the same passion in the stands? I would say we'd have an even bigger passion, to be honest. If you go to Old Trafford, you're not going to go into the bar and maybe have a point with the players afterwards, do you? Where if you come down here, you might, you know? When I was growing up, Kilkenny City, when we went to a game, and you said, that central defender is shite. He heard you, and he looked over at you. You're much closer to the action. It has a much more raw feel to it. Afterwards, there's music in the bars, before the game, there's chants and songs. It's just a, a, a bigger thing than just the game. I'll tell you what, before I came out here, if you told me I'd experience my most exhilarating moment for a derby where one team, half of them are just part-time workers in a league that most people in Ireland don't even watch, I would have told you to get out of here, but I did. I experienced it in that corner. Every goal that went in, I almost got completely trampled by passionate fans who were supporting their local team. But I've got to give credit to the Rovers fan as well. They didn't stop singing, especially when that goal went in. They almost brought that little stand down. But today, it's about two things. The Red and Black, of course, who now run Dublin until the next game. But more importantly, it's about local football. If those scenes you saw there don't convince you, especially Irish football fans, to support your local team, I don't know what will because you won't get that in one of those giant stadiums on a second and third tier. You get that supporting your local football team, especially at a derby. So make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to Copper 90. But most importantly, get out there, support your local team, wherever you are. How do you, how do you describe the atmosphere? Come from and see, it's... it's <coughs> <laughs> I was trying to hold it. I was trying to hold it. <laughs>
I was like, I was like, I was like, what even was that? I'm so sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah. I won a competition. All right, um. <laughs>